Hey everyone, Jeff here. Thanks for tuning in to episode five of the Modern Kitchen Renovation Series. If you missed the previous episode, be sure to check it out. We finally wrapped up our existing conditions Revit model using our scan from Polycam and some other various information, making some roof ceilings, a bunch of really cool stuff. And now we're ready to start designing the fun part of architecture, right? Uh, before we jump into uh, the designing uh, and, and talking about my design process, I did wanna take a minute to thank our sponsor of this series, and that is RevitFamily.biz. If you're not familiar with RevitFamily.biz, it is a company created by Brenton Weiberg, where he creates uh, cabinets, um, doors, windows, and various um, Revit family bundles, uh, typically for focused on residential um, and, uh, and, and uh, packages for you guys to download um, and purchase. Brenton has been kind enough to not only support and sponsor this series, but also offer 20% off to anyone using the promo code 2022REVITKID. So we're gonna uh, play a quick promo reel and then get into it. But I wanted to thank Brenton and thank you guys for watching. Um, you're actually gonna see some of his families being used as we build out this kitchen moving on because I've been using them for for a while, uh, especially in my residential kitchen work. Um, so for that, let's roll the clip and then we'll jump right into the uh, tutorial. All right, so up to this point, right, we've just modeled existing conditions, um, we've documented existing conditions, and now we've got ourselves sort of a base plan that we can that we can utilize for, for sort of designing, for, for figuring out what on earth we're going to lay out here. Um, and so I think some of you may be tuning in and thinking I might have some crazy fancy technology to, uh, <laughs> to, uh, to start designing, but the truth of the matter is when it comes to the actual Iterative, iterative process of design. Um, I honestly start with with this stuff here, this fancy technology called trace paper, um, as well as some other pads and pens, which we'll talk about a little bit. But my process is still very much connected to technology and Revit and what we're doing there, in the sense that it is a iterative design process between Revit and the hand sketch. Um, so the first thing that I always do once I have an existing um, background ready, whether it's a elevation, whether it's a site plan, whether it's a floor plan, is I print it out. And that process of printing it out is pretty straightforward, but I figured I would quickly walk through in Revit how I kind of create these sheets um, that I call sketch sheets um, for the simple purpose of printing and sketching over. So here I am in, in the Revit project. Um, and as you can see, I'm going to my sheet view. I've got a couple different sheet views already set up in my template. These are 24 by 36. I'm gonna just create a, a new sheet. And you'll notice I'm actually pressing none. And part of the reason why I wanted to show you guys this process is because some people don't realize that you can do this. I'm just sketching an annotated line um, that is eight and a half inches by 11 inches. Um, the sheet view is a paper space, so to speak, for any of those AutoCAD users out there. Um, and so by doing this, um, this is true real world scale. And there's my sheet of paper. So I have an outline. Um, I don't need a title block because I'm just quickly uh, printing this thing and ready to roll. Um, and then I'm going to create a, a floor plan view um, that I call sketch or, or print or something like that. Um, I'm creating a view template here that has the point clouds off. Um, I had one that had the point clouds on, but uh, this one wanted off. And then now I've got a view that I can uh, dump onto the sheet. It's a dedicated view that has its own view template. So if I had other floor plans, I could do that. And then from there, sometimes I might have to change the scale. Um, as you can see, this this actually fits all right. Um, uh, as as is whatever scale this was, I think it was quarter inch. And I'm just going to center this on on the little drafted uh, <laughs> title block. And then I've got a a sheet that's printable to eight and a half by 11 um, and uh, and quickly able to sort of print these views out and, and, and sketch over them. Um, so I'm going to go to my uh, print uh, control P. I'm going to set up using a blue beam PDF printer here, setting the scale to 100 um, percent again, because we want it to be nice and, and to scale, uh, making sure all my settings are good. And then I'm going to print out this PDF. Um, you could print directly to your printer if you want. I like to print the PDF uh, mainly because I might use it on the iPad or something like that. Here's what the uh, the PDF looks like. Again, true to scale, eight and a half by um, 11. And then I 
print it onto uh, into paper. And, and, and that's sort of the process of creating these little sketched views. Um, so depending on the project, I may have a bunch of these little views and a bunch of these little sheets set up um, ready to print and continue that iterative process. All right, now that I have my sketch sheet uh, ready to go, it's printed out, it's time to start sketching. Uh, I know I'm going to get this question because the last time I talked about it, a lot of people uh, emailed or commented about sort of some of the some of the actual sketching tools that I use. Um, and so, um, I mean, this we will start here. This is just a regular piece of trace. Uh, sometimes I like the canary yellow one. Sometimes I have the white, depending on what it is. I mean, I think every architect out there hopefully knows what this is and knows where to get these. So I definitely use that. Um, I, I will link some of the pens and pencils and stuff that I like to use when it comes to just straight up trace sketching, free form, um, you know, loose sketching. There's kind of three, three pens that, uh, that I really, really like that I have an ungodly amount of here in the office. Um, one is the Sharpie uh, pen. And so it's a, um, it's just a Sharpie, <laughs> but it has a, it has a really, really thin, thin tip to it. Um, and this is really nice because again, it's a Sharpie, so it can write on anything, but it, it's, it, it's sort of, it's nice for the fine detail um, when you're going in a, a little, a little closer. Um, this is probably one of my favorite all time fast sketching, uh, trace uh, pens, which is the Uniball Vision gel pen, believe it or not, um, you know, waterproof, etc. Uh, the one thing with these is obviously it takes a quick second to dry. But um, the what I like about these is there's there's pretty much no restriction to your to your sketching. It's, it's very um, fluid over the paper. And I just feel like uh, when it comes to really fast, really quick um, sketching bubble diagrams, you name it, uh, this is this is one of my number one go to's. And then of course, the the classic classic Pentel sign pen. And I know everyone out there knows what these are. And it's a it's a marker, so to speak, but it's got a tip. So it can be it can be thin, it can be thick, um, again, really fast, really, really good. So if I had to choose anything out of all of all of the stuff that I use, these three have been staples for many, many, many years in my backpacks in my in my desk. And then I do have and I'll show some pictures as we go through it. I do have a little a little case for some of my more uh, more used stuff like a couple couple gray gray markers a couple color accents and maybe some pencils here and there but if if you're if you're looking to sort of understand more of the actual individual tools i use those three are no-brainers for for us going through okay so now jumping into the actual sketching um it is an iterative process and and the way it works is 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 very much a, a free flow development of ideas um you know this is a little unique in the sense that it's a kitchen so it's not you know full diagram programmatic diagram um, of a house, of a space, of a building, um, but there's still programmatic areas within a kitchen, right? What, what are you doing in certain areas? There's flows. There's a lot of information. So, um, what I do is, is I'm jumping in right away. I'm gonna, I'm gonna roll my trace on top, and I'm gonna start thinking free flow of the use of this kitchen, looking at the shape of it, and and thinking about the opportunities that exist within the site itself. So as I sit down to sketch, uh, what you'll notice in this little time lapse here is the computer is up, right? I have my sketch paper down there. I'm listening to music, but I'm constantly looking back and forth between the computer, between the sketch, between my 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 drawings, between other drawings. And here I'm just kind of I'm looking at the view. I'm looking at um, the flows. I'm looking at the 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 locations of different spaces within it because this is a unique shaped kitchen. And so the first sort of round of sketching, um, as you'll see in a second, is is a little rough, right? It's more of like a bubble diagram, just sort of looking up. I was trying to play with two ideas um, of 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 uh, this kitchen layout. I ended up just only showing the client one idea, just a, a couple of variations on them, because I even even the two ideas weren't weren't necessarily my favorite. Um, and so, from what you can see in this sketch here, uh, these are kind of the first uh, most refined version of the initial sketches. Is uh, I'm playing with as you look at this image, I'm playing with okay. We have this awkward shape uh, of this of this room. We have these angles. We have these two different uh, entrances. Um, we have uh, a north and a south side of the of the project. We have a view all facing towards the top of my sketch here. Um, and so what I was playing with was two ideas. One is placing the island and the sort of kitchen workspace on the on the left side of the image, which is the bottom option, um, which makes it a little awkward for where the table and dining is. Um, but also uh, on the back wall, which is the north wall, um, as you can see. I'm definitely playing with the idea of of adding light if I can um, in between the columns of the exterior, um, but making that entire wall cabinetry, casework, some sort of workspace. And so um, initially, I start 
playing with these two options and and I start placing them into Revit and going back and forth. But by the time we're done with this, you'll see I kind of just decided to go with one option and just modify a couple ideas to it. Um, so when I make a sketch like this, it's, it's a starting point, right? It's a starting point to, to start um, now jumping into uh, a more refined version of it. But you'll notice the top scheme, it, it starts to show some of the benefits of, of the space itself. There's there's all, all the directional, um, um, all the views really want to face towards the top of the page. Um, so opening up that wall, um, uh, putting the putting the the dining room table there, um, having the the island facing that direction, sort of having everything kind of facing towards the actual view, while t still taking advantage of of the space that exists, as well as trying to eliminate the awkwardness of angles. Um, so by placing a free floating furniture like a, a table towards the north, um, by placing the island in the middle instead of trying to attach it to those walls on the side, and then putting the entire north wall as being this working utility wall, um, it really helps sort of uh, not to mention, forget, don't forget, there's that awkward ceiling uh, on the top of the page where the dining room is. So uh, casework and all that stuff, you're, you're asking for some trouble. So it just kind of makes simplifies the, the, the project a little bit. So from here, what I'll do is um, I will jump into Revit a lot of times um, and I may test some of these things out fully to scale. Um, and I'll show you in the next video um, um, how I how I do that, um, which is sort of ref uh, using some generic casework families. And I'm actually going to show you how I build this generic casework family. It's going to be super fun. Um, and then I'll jump into like Enscape and, and get the perspective in here and there. And then I'll go back to my sketch and I'll roll it over. Or sometimes I'll look at this and I'll just quickly sketch on a more refined piece of paper, let's say, um, with to scale with a scale. And I'll start actually, you know, sketching out elevations and, and, and sometimes 3D views, you know, whatever it is. And so that, for that, actually, um, what I use is typically this guy right here. Huge fan of, of toned, toned tan paper um, using the same pens and pencils and stuff. Um, but I love I love the fact that I can use um whites um, and, and grays and blacks all on the same paper um, to accent certain things. And so what you see here is some of the, the next versions of sketches that I did, um, where I'm now looking at a couple interior elevations, sort of thinking and playing out these ideas. These are kind of the final versions. There's a couple pages before it. Um, and I'm starting to sort of refine and, and, and get myself um, more situated with how I want this actually to lay out. Again, this is all sketch, so um, it's all going to modify a little bit. But, but now I can go back and forth between Revit and these type of uh, sketches and back and forth and and that's how my process goes it's very much a um, sketch it here put plug it in into revit to scale check it out maybe in enscape in white mode pers for perspective and then maybe print out another view sometimes i'll set up perspective views i'll print those out and sketch over them um, sometimes i'll put in just a generic casework um, i'll print those out and sketch on top of that and so it becomes the revit and and the, the computer becomes just a tool to to um, you know assist in the process of sketching and iterating through these these things. So that's kind of the initial process. Uh, you, you're kind of seeing uh, some of the sketching. You're starting to see some of my design ideas going into it. Um, hopefully you're getting a sense of where this project's going a little bit. Um, and, and the next video, what I want to show you is how I create a generic um, uh, casework family that's line based. So it makes it easier just to click, click, click and quickly place these in. And then also how I use Enscape as a tool for design, not just a tool for rendering, because I do think jumping into the perspective of 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 the project of the human being within the space is something extremely valuable um, to, to sort of work out whether your ideas are, are valid or how you see them in your mind or even how you see them sketched because obviously with the sketch we can we can fudge scale if we need to right so uh, so that's the process that's that's what you're seeing starting to unfold here um, hopefully this was helpful and uh, if you enjoyed this series make sure you subscribe below and definitely tune in next uh, for the next episode as we continue developing this I'm excited to show you the process and, and show you how this how this project has uh, has unfolded over time